Hi friends, welcome to Crafting and Relaxing. This is Sarah, thank you so much for joining me. This is one of my weekend updates videos where I tell you what's going on in the craft room, sort of some behind the scenes, and updates on things that aren't necessarily video worthy, but you might wanna know about. Today we have Happy Mail from Pamela. Look at this package, I just love it. I love how she has the big beautiful blue paper and she did it for her own address too super cute and then stars love it really fun so let's see oh and i had this tape but then i ran out and sometimes uh, dollar tree has different colors so i have purple right now just depends they don't have all the colors all the time pamela what did you send me let's see what she sent Okay, um, I have a video out there with a foil quill cartridge giveaway. It has a bunch of images. If you have a foil quill, be sure and leave a comment if you'd like to have that on that video. And in it, I said you had to be a visible subscriber, and that caused people some concern because not everyone likes to make it so that their subscriptions are public. And if you're here and you're commenting all the time, that's fine. I, you don't have to be a visible subscriber. It's just that otherwise, if somebody's brand new, there's no way to tell if they're really even in the game. You know what I mean? Oh, look at this. Oh my gosh. Pamela. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Napkins are so fun. So, oh my gosh, look at that. So this is paper that has a felt texture. And it's really cool. I have some in my stash that I actually got from my sister. Ooh, I love it. So cute. And this big, beautiful bow. Love it. I would never think to use a big ribbon on a card, and it's gorgeous. I always stick with smaller ribbons. Love it. She was saying thanks for the journal that I sent her that... I had the paper and Beth from Bourbon Creek Crafts had the ephemera and I put it all together and sent Pam a journal. And that's too bad that you haven't been back to the reuse place, but sounds like it might have been a little rough. And it's so hard to travel right now. And by the way, your handwriting is gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Okay, let's see what else she sent and then I'll ramble about all my stuff while we take a look. That's part of why I like to do happy mail while in these videos because then um, we have something fun to look at. I don't have to brush my hair, you know. And my camera is really easy to do on a mount, but to turn it around and have it on me, it takes me forever to set it up. Like, it's like a 15 minute project. Oh my gosh, these are gonna be amazing. Amazing in my July daily. Did you know they were going in there? I wonder if you glittered them or if they came that way. That is really cool. Love those. A few cards. Love these cards and how they turn out different every time. Yeah. Okay. So she's been doing scrap cards. And look at them. Ooh, she saved some really narrow strips right there. I have some videos on them. I talk about them. And many times when I do a collection, I'll put a scrap card in there. I use the branding strips at the end. See like this one where she used the hole punch? But it's a gorgeous glitter, so how could you pass it up? Just put your sentiment over that. This is amazing paper. What is that from? Yeah, scrap cards are wonderful. They do. They always turn out different. You are so wonderful. That is cute. And then look, she stamped inside it. Oh my gosh, these are so fun. Oh, these are whole reinforcements. Those are great for tags and journals and all sorts of things. Oh, they're sold in planner accessories. I never look at planner stuff. I wouldn't have even thought to look there. And they're iridescent. I am terrible at Facebook. So I answer you pretty timely if you talk to me on Instagram. But Kathy and Cheryl sent me messages in Facebook, but not on Messenger. It was like in the community tab of my crafting and relaxing page. These are cool. I love them. So my apologies for not getting back to you sooner. Oh, I like this. You can just decorate it all up and it has the blue string in it. 
but I'm just bad at Facebook. So that's totally on me. I was thinking about possible videos. I was wondering if you had any interest in, I've been doing YouTube now for about two and a half years. So do you have any interest in like, if you want to start a YouTube channel or, you know, like the behind the scenes stuff, you might not, you might not care at all. I didn't watch any of those videos before I just up and did it. Let's see what else I wondered if you wanted to video about. We've been doing tons of home improvement projects. Ridiculous. Mr. Crafting and Relaxing decided that he's going to be a builder. And so he's like been building a TV cabinet, shelves for the shop, a workbench. And this weekend we're ripping apart our bathroom. It is hot mess and totally rotten underneath. So <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that goes. But we are not putting it back together ourselves. So that should help because we can get some advice. Look at all of these. Found these napkins Tuesday morning, Fort Collins, Colorado. I love the sea life and the blue. Absolutely loved the napkin card you made last year. But if you don't feel inspired by these, I understand. What? How could I not feel inspired by these? I think she's talking about the one where it was about this time last year too, because it was a end of school year party. I went to a work party and I took one of the napkins and made the hostess a thank you card with the napkin because I figured she bought the napkins. She probably likes those colors and it did turn out gorgeous. It was not a color palette I would have chosen because I would have bought these. I love all of these, Pamela. Absolutely. Oh, this bag is neat too. And napkins are hard. Like I walk down the aisle and I look, ooh, and I look at them and I just don't know. If you're not familiar with making craft projects with napkins, it's super easy and fun. You take off all the white layers. The best way to do it is to use tape because sometimes they're two layers, sometimes they're three. And you could cut out the bird. You could use it as a background. You could tear it apart and kind of collage it on there all sorts of things. I mean, oh my gosh. I think this one's my favorite. Yeah, these are great. Thank you so much, Pamela. It is so funny how we get to know each other. And that's one of the things that has been a surprise for me on YouTube. Oh, these would be cool. And then you could add color here and there if you wanted. That has been a real surprise is making long distance friends. I'll get back on track. So I wondered about different videos you might want to see. If you just want to see paper crafting, totally fine with it. I just do lots of different stuff and you just never know where the day is going to take me. I also wondered if you wanted to see a backyard update because now everything has bloomed. Some things we've even missed. Uh, the blueberries are on and I think a year ago, maybe it's been two. It's probably been two. We did a succulent bed and I was watering it today, which I don't do very often and thought, wow, this has really filled in nicely. <laughs> I don't know if it was in the last video or not. So just let me know. Don't ever hesitate to comment if I mention something in an update and then I forget to close the loop on it. Just let me know because it's not that I don't want you to know. It's just that I forget or I don't know, something shiny came along. But does anyone use their ATG? for journal making. Can I depend on my ATG gun to assemble like pockets and journals and put things, you know, put, I mean, I know I could put embellishments, right? But can I use it to put the pocket together around the edge and will it hold well enough, do you think? If you use your ATG to make journals, and you have one that's like six month old, I, I would love to know if you're doing that because I, I want to be especially careful if I'm selling stuff on Etsy, right? I, I, <laughs> I mean, it's one thing if it falls apart in my craft room, I have five different adhesives to put it back together with. Notice I said five. If you saw my adhesives video, <laughs> that's not quite correct, but it's less embarrassing. TV and movies, I am totally hooked on Clutterbug has a show, Cassandra, and it is called Hot Mess House. I think so far there's only four episodes out. It's brand new 
And you've heard me talk about that I'm a butterfly in the world of organization, which means if I can't see it, it's gone. And if it's going to take too much work or two hands to put away, I'm not going to do it. Which is why I had Mr. Crafting and Relaxing make me that really cute tool cubby. You might have seen it on Instagram. It's not a cubby. It's like a tuck and hanging. That's what I've been watching for TV. And I also, I think I forgot to tell you, I watched the remake of Footloose. It was okay, but I'll stick with the original. But you know how we were like, okay, we're all trapped at home, old movies. So that was one that I did watch and forgot to tell you about. More organizational stuff along with Clutterbug. You know I love her. My magnet sheet, that is a magnet that I ordered on Amazon and put on the wall. And you can see I just stapled it up. My friend Noni has one that got mounted to the background for a frame and then went on the wall. Mine sags a little. I had planned that maybe I would put a frame around it, but I'm thinking I might actually have to take it off the wall. And I mean, look at my walls, like who cares, right? I just, I don't know if I want to actually glue it to the wall. So I might have to take it off and then put it on a piece of sheeting and then put it back up because it continues to sag a little. And I don't know if I want to put staples in the middle and Mr. Crafting and Relaxing needs project. So he could probably put it on sheeting, right? And he, he probably wouldn't even complain. The other thing that I've been thinking about in my room is... In Hot Mess House, Cassandra was talking about homing and how everything has to have a place. And you know how we all talk about we clean up. Okay, well, I don't know. You normal people that do clean, you talk about how you clean up between projects. I do the same thing. So I don't have a place where I put work in process. Do you know what I mean? Right now I have a list. I think I have five projects going or at least that I actually have the stuff started and plan to do within a month. My July daily, smash that small paper pad, no paper left behind. So those are two different paper collections I'm doing different things with. I'm doing some very specific uh, special birthday cards and using a different paper collection for that. And then I have a box and I've only gotten so far as to put the pictures for my 12 by 12 scrapbook pages for the Garth concert in there. That's as far as I got so far. So that's five, five, I think. Now the July daily is like two giant boxes and then half the counter. But I don't have a place that I can say, okay, I'm gonna put this one away and put this one. So what happens to me is I use all the surfaces should I show you? Oh, it's so embarrassing. I'll show you. So this whole table is pretty much one project. Recently, since I've been trying to finish a paper collection all the way, I would just leave it out until I was completely done with it. Well, that's an entire table. I don't know. How long is that table? Five feet? So if I need to work at this table during the week, which I do, then that's problematic. So what I started doing was figuring out on this shelf over here, I have a box that says no paper left behind. And then up here, the boxes for the other things go. Now, this isn't all of no paper left behind. It's sprawled out in the front room. But then I was thinking I need spaces for not the UFOs, not the abandoned and I'm not working on it, but the I am coming back to it soon. This is another category that I realized. I need a place to put things until I send the proper thank yous. Because I'll tell you what happens. I will not put my happy mail away until I've thanked you for it, but it just, it gets buried because I didn't have a place for it. So I've started really thinking about homing and, and having places to put away real life, not just the perfect craft room that you post on Pinterest which I don't really do. And I don't know how to post on Pinterest very well either. So don't write me messages there either. <laughs> I think I have two accounts on Pinterest too. I am thinking about organization and maybe real organization because what I'm finding is if I'm working on five projects at once, I'm almost never done. The only time my craft room actually gets tidy 
is if I finish things early in the month and then it's not time to start my next collaborations. So I don't know, just thinking about that and really trying it. I bought the big ridiculous Fiskars paper cutter. Maybe you saw that on Instagram. I don't know. It was just like I was sitting there one night and I used my big green cutter and I was trying to cut a journal cover that was two layers. And I was like, this is nonsense. And I just went and one clicked. It came and I don't think I'm in love. I, I don't know. I'm going to do another paper cutter comparison video. And if you saw my old one, and if you've been watching my channel for a while, you're probably like, that lady's crazy. She buys so many paper cutters. I know. I know I do. But I'm looking for the perfect one or the semi-perfect. My biggest problem with my big green cutter bug, is that what it's called? Cutter bee? I don't know. Um, anyway, the big green one, 110 pound cardstock. When I make my card bases, and I don't know if it's because I use the... Oh, this isn't it. This is a nice piece of paper. I don't know if it's because I use the fairly inexpensive like Michael's paper for my card bases, but one side gets a really big ridge. The orange cutter is better than the green one, but the two halves of the paper do not come out exactly the same. One side has that big ridge and that is super picky. I know. And you can go back over it with your bone bone folder and flatten it, but I just don't want to. Oh, I'm also expecting a big box of wonderful goodness on Monday. And I need to keep reminding myself that because that should be inspiration to clean my craft room. And when that comes, I'll do a share with you and tell you about those amazing bargains too. But uh, right now we, we couldn't open that box. There's just no room. <laughs> so we'll have to work on that. And let's see. Oh, I was wondering, do you as a viewer like premiere videos? The kind where the person sets the date and time that it rolls out, it gets announced and advanced, and then I could be online answering your questions as the videos go. The only thing about that is we might not all be at the same place. I mean, I've never done one as the uh, channel person. So I don't know. Would you like that? I think that might be good if you're new and you're trying to learn. And when you watch my videos, I'm leaving too much out and you have questions. One of the things I thought about was for No Paper Left Behind, it's a 48 sheet pad. And I started to film my process on that. I mean, not the middle at all. I'm not going to have process video for 48 sheets, but how I approached it, because it's a little different than how I would approach a six by six. I mean, 48 sheets of 12 by 12, I can't just take them all apart and lay them out, right? So let me know any, any random things that you might want to see about that, or if you have interest in premieres. I'm happy, happy to share. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you are having an amazing time and that your area is healthy. I know some of you have shared that it's not. My area is, I'm going to say weird. And <laughs> in my July daily, I'm noticing that. So I won't go into too much detail because it is really interesting to be doing a daily journal right now, just like I thought it would be. We went out for lunch the other day. Well, we had a little trouble figuring out where to go. And what we ended up doing was eating in the back of our Subaru. It's weird, right? It's weird when you go out. And the reason that we did that is, I don't know if all of our restaurants are because last month I mentioned that I went to Beaverton to the paper crafting store that I couldn't resist when I went on that 4th of July ridiculous spree and bought all those red, white, and blue papers. When we went to Chick-fil-A, which is kind of a big deal. I don't know. That might kind of sound loserish to some of you, but we don't have one. I think the closest one is probably at least 45 minutes from us. So we went to Chick-fil-A. You couldn't eat inside. So we sat in our car. So it seems like when you go out to eat these days, you just eat in your car because even if the dining room is open, there might not be enough seats because in our dining rooms, they've gone through, like, if there are this many tables, there are signs that say uh, temporarily closed 
at every other one. So there aren't that many. And I kind of feel bad. Like if people are traveling, they actually probably need a table if they've been in their car all day on the freeway or something. It's such a weird world. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure you're taking time for yourself. I hope you're taking time for crafting and relaxing. And I hope that you are finding joy in your day. Whatever it is, no matter how small, life is what you make it. There are things that are not awesome. You just have to look at things and decide, I'm going to have a good attitude about this. It, it doesn't necessarily mean everything in your life is fabulous all the time. It just means that you deal with it. Thanks for watching and thank you so much to Pamela. So sweet of you. You did not have to send me happy mail for winning the journal. <laughs> Such a funny circle. You guys are so sweet to me. Thanks. Bye-bye.